Hey guys, it's Vandy Ezzel, back again with another Card Fight Vanguard Ezzel and the Vandy weekly reveal. So if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join the Patreon. And let's get one started. Today, or should I say two days from now, we should be getting the gun and sword for Baz of Agra. I am not exactly sure if we're getting the gun and sword, but accordingly we're getting two new cards for Baz of Agra, so they're most likely going to be the gun and sword. As per usual, I'm recording this two days early because... <sighs> The day that the reveals come out and the day I upload them always never collide with my timing of schedule. So let's go ahead and get this interesting week started because we do have a good amount of reveals so far. First up we have Aurora Battle Princess Taser Rogue, grade 3, twin drive persona right, 13k base, auto front row rear guard once per turn when your opponent's rear guard is placed from anywhere other than their hand, rest it. So it's kind of like turquoise. Except I in my personal opinion, turquoise is better than this because while this is a higher power during your opponent's turn, turquoise can make their units weaker, and not a lot of things can pump power to rear guards currently. Like, I like this, don't get me wrong, but this does absolutely nothing against decks like Greedon, which I don't know how Greedon's going to do in meta, but it probably do pretty well. And Bruce, this doesn't stop Bruce at all. So, like, it's definitely a good card. But the problem with it is it being a once per turn and turquoise not being a once per turn and turquoise has more impact against most decks in comparison, turquoise kind of wins out the game here. But if you want this as a budget card because maybe turquoise is too expensive, go for it because it works really well, I mean, regardless, because you do get that rest at least once. So three of, four of, if you decide to run it, otherwise run turquoise though because turquoise is better. Next up we have Aurora Battle Princess Investigation Network of the Great Chase. Another freaking hero world name. Grade 2, Normal Order, Soul Blast 2 to play it. Imprison all of your opponent's back row rear guards. So you just take their entire back row from them. So they get nothing. You, you just take their entire back row from them. Okay, Prison has stolen a book page right out of Narukami's book and did not care. So, very interesting order. You have a lot of soul to work with. Frankly, I have way too much soul to work with, so I could use this if I really wanted to. My problem with this is that a lot of decks do not need to call rear guards against prison, or a lot of decks that I see play don't call that many rear guards against prison. So being able to imprison the back row, while it's an interesting card, I'll give it that, doesn't do much, or at least from what I've seen. I don't know, I'm not so sure, like, because I don't pay attention to tournaments. Maybe that is a pro play where you just call back row besides of just trick stars, but, um... Yeah, this is. I'm, doesn't this counter Trickstar? Because I think Trickstar says it can't be chosen by effects. This doesn't choose, it targets all. So, you know, maybe this is a counter Trickstar. Who knows? Two copies of this thing if you want to run it, because a, it is a good card because it gets three units at once. But in my opinion, I don't want to run this because, you know, I prefer the one that can um, take from hand. But if you want to run this, it's still a good card, so two of. Next up, we have Sylvain Horn Beast. Girafina, 10k base, 5k shield, great to intercept, auto once placed on back row, rear, you may give it plus 10 for the turn, if you do, until enough turn, it cannot move to a different rear guard circle. So basically, put it in the back row, and if you do, you cannot move its position for the turn. So that one grade one that can swap columns and rows, yeah, now you kind of can't use that with this thing, but either way, it's still really good, get you that plus 10, and it's very powerful. So I'll give it a 3 of because it is for free, and you get that plus ton of it, but at the same time, it doesn't bounce itself back to hand, it's also only for the turn, so, you know, we'll give it for the three. <clears throat> Next up, we have Flourishing Petal Retia, 8k base, 5k shield, great on with boost, continuous guard circle, if your opponent's vanguards are great to a great, it gets plus 5k shield. Okay, so it's a 10k shield, so really good for, I guess, early guarding reasons, and really, I guess, it's helpful in the late game where, like, you have a decent amount of hand cards and it gives grade ones more value now my question about this is or my thing that i want for this i want there to be a neo nectar build i don't know why after seeing this card i feel like there needs to be a neo nectar build now i don't know why i guess it's because like this is the most generic card next to the crit that happens to look like a neo nectar card so we'll give it to a three of or four of if you decide to run it because that is a 10k shield i won't run it guaranteed because one I'm not running this in Sylvan Horn Beast, but I feel like you should run it because once more archetypal person over here, and then I won't run this in Zorga because I need space for orders and Alchemagic cards, and I won't run this in Flagberg because Flagberg needs three standards. So that's my excuse for not running Retia. Run it if you want to, it is a good card, but I do stupid things. 
Next up, we have Desire, Desire Devil Yada. We just got new Desire Devils, and then we're going to get more of them. AK Base, 5k shield, great one with boost. Auto rear when your Vanguard attacks. If you have three or more stand units, retire this unit, Soul Charge 2. Choose a card from your soul with the same name as your Vanguard and put it at the top of your deck. I do understand the point behind this card, because effectively, you're getting the Soul Charge. So basically, you're Soul Charging 1, and you're getting access to a Persona Ride. My problem with this is Greed on Skill requires you... Yeah, Greed on Skill requires you to basically have a copy of Greed on and Soul, which means you're effectively losing access to your 7th damage kill line. But at the same time, it's really good because you can use it without using Greed on. So you can use it in Barrel Magnus, you can use it in Bruce. It's an interesting card. I give it a 3 over 2 of because it definitely has splash ability like all the builds. It's just that Greed on feels the weirdest for this to belong in, but in terms of typing, but it's still pretty good, so I'll give it a 3 of. Next up we have Devil Desire Devil Walzu Wazule. 13k base, great to trap persona ride, auto soul when your average demonic dragon greed on is placed on van. Counterblast one to call this card from to rear guard. This does not activate if it was on van and was ridden over. So basically you can't go and put this in your ride line and then ride it. You have to get this into soul, then ride greed on. So pretty much this is the fodder that you use for Bushoku's shove a card to soul such a copy for it. So you can, you know, get its ability off when you ride into greed on. So next up we have Cutting Sword Dance Chigura. So now we have the Double Rare, which is most likely going to be for Bear Magnus, but it can also be used in Greedon because their support is 50-50. 10k base, 5k shield, Grage with Intercept, Cutting Sword Dance Chigura, if I didn't say it earlier. Auto one is placed on rear, perform all the following according to the number of cards in your soul. Seven or more, Counter Blast 1, Discard 1, choose a card from your soul, put it to hand, and Soul Charge 1. Basically, the Grade 3 order that is Counter Blast 1, Soul Charge 3. If you have 10 or more soul, get a card to hand, but you also have to discard for it but cheaper, and you can use it at a lesser soul count, so I already like it for that, plus it's a unit, which means you're not losing shield out of it, and two, uh, 13 or more, and all of your front row units get plus 5 for the turn. I think I just found Phantasmagoria's replacement, because that's abil that ability is for free. Whoo, I've been running with Phantasmagoria around for... Since set one, I think this is the time where I delete it from the game. Whew, three set, four sets in, finally he goes away. Well, Chiguru makes an interesting point, getting you that 5k basically being a substitute for Phantasmagoria, followed by being basically the grade three order, except you do get less soul, but you can use them at an earlier soul. So I get this thing a four of, like, it's really good. You can use it in Greedon, you can use it in Bruce, which you most likely won't use it in. You can use it, eh, I don't know, you could use it in, um... Hero Magnus, really great card. I love how all of Dark State's decks all have like the same bases with all of them being soul based, which means any card that supports soul, they have a chance of going in there. So four copies of Chigura and like almost any of the builds except for maybe Bruce. And our last card for now, we have Steam Hunter Nanar, 8k base, 5k shield, great one with boost, continuous during your turn. If you have five or more cards your soul, all of your vanguards get plus two. So basically you send four of these on the board, Vanguard gets plus 8. You stack 3 of these behind Barrow Magnus. 3 of these behind Bruce. Okay, suddenly, Dark States makes me scared. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm getting the creepy feeling that Dark States might be coming for me. Because we got some pretty good cards out of just 4 reveals. Mm. 4 of, 3 of... I'm kind of terrified of this thing now. So... I'll be back in a minute where we will have hopefully our gun support slash spear for Baz of Gras and maybe some other cards. Next up we have Knight of Armor of from last time we had the uh, Mudar, but now we have Knight of Armor Piercing Morgan, grade 1, boost, 5k shield, AK base, auto when it's placed on rear from hand. If you have a Vanguard with Blaster Dark, I mean sorry, not Blaster Dark, with Blaster in its card name, discard a card from your hand, look at top 2, choose up to 2 unit cards from among them, call them to rear guard as rest, and discard the rest. So pretty much, if you have a Vanguard Blaster, discard something, call top 2, and then you have fodder for Blaster Dark. Now. That all around is really good. And for some reason, Blaster, I mean, Phantom Blaster Dragon is actually getting more support than Overlord. Because if you look at set three, Phantom Blaster got two, it got, I think it got one support card or maybe it got two, while Overlord didn't get anything. And curiously, Overlord still hasn't had support and Blasters have now have two new cards, one of them being Morgan. Is Bushy showing favoritism to Phantom Blaster? 
Did they forget about Overlord? Was Set 3 an accident and they actually did forget about Overlord? Or are they scrapping Overlord because Basvergraal took his place? Because in my opinion, if they are, then what was the point of making Overlord? Besides just to like sidestep Eugene for a hot second because ba Overlord has had no support and Basvergraal literally took Overlord's support. I mean, even in Set 3, they could have given it something like... Morgan kind of took its place, but... I mean, I mean, PBD took its place. But either way, PBD got a really good card there because my problem with PBD originally was that it was a bit too counter bus heavy and a bit too cost heavy. This is just straight up discard one. I never had a hand problem, so automatically that's good. And it gives me like half the cost for PBD. So Morgan, hands down, four copies, amazing double rare. I'm going to spend all my money on that. Next up, we have Pledge of the Dragon, another card for PBD. Grade 3, Blitz Order. Choose one of your units that's being attacked with Blaster and its card name. It gets plus 15 for the battle. Choose one of your rear guards to retire it. I mean, you may retire it. If you retired your Vanguard, it's another plus 15 for that battle. So, I hated Hopeful Test Duty because it required me to have three or more rear guards to use. Automatically, this brings my Vanguard to 28 as long as it's a, van as long as it's a Blaster. So, regardless, if we just cut it off there, I already know I'm picking this over Hopeful Test Duty because they're the same cost they give the same amount of power it's just differences this requires a vanguard blaster the other one requires three or more units yeah this one seems easier to pull off in a blaster deck and then also you can just kill a rear guard and then get another plus 15 so these this is the equivalent to two triggers first off i don't know if i said it but this is a four of and this is a three of hands down no questions asked and our last card for Monday's reveals before I go and then wait for Tuesday to come is Trick Moon. So, a lot of people said that before we got news of what Basvagra did or hints about her, a lot of people said she would have a trick star or like an alternate way to overdress. Well, that is not particularly true. We have confirmation that a double rare for her is Trick Moon, who looks really closely related to Trickstar. I don't know, maybe if you remove the hoodie, it looks just like a blue and gray Trickstar combined with literally the name is just Moon instead of Star. It is even still the same amount of letters in it, a nine lettered word, but sure. Grade zero, boost, 5k shield, 5k base. Auto when it's placed on back row center from drop counter charge one. Obviously meant to be used with Baz Vigra because she can just call it back to back center because you know she can call it grade one or less when she's armed. But also curiously, you can use this in Nirvana because you can just call this behind Nirvana. I did complain about not having a counter charger that wasn't Gojo. And now I have the ability to fetch a counter charger from drop. Problem is... Uh, it has to be placed on back center and the other abilities are really useless if you don't have Basil Vagra. Speaking of which, Dress Boost. Did they steal... Did they just take Trickstar and then just change some words around? Because this kind of feels like what they did. <laughs> but Dress Boost. Auto Rear, when this unit boosts, if the boosted unit gets plus 10k until end of battle for each armed card to your sealed blaze made in Basil Vagra. So if you have two, the boost unit gets plus 20. So this is a 25k booster. Now, interestingly enough about this, you can just call three. It doesn't have to be in the back center for that. It gets back center for a counter charge, but not for the other one. So you could effectively just call three of these to the back row with Baz Vagra and, you know, get plus 25. I mean, get plus 20 to all of your rear guards when they swing. So plus five, so that's 25 to whatever the normal number was. If you Persona Ride this plus 35, Baz Vagra, after only getting like five actual cards, wait, no, three cards, no, yeah, five cards that we know of, in, no, four cards, four cards that we know of in set two, yeah, four cards that we know of in set two that isn't the gun and the spear, already Baz Vagra has already hit interesting numbers. And I know what the spear does, or at least one of its abilities, if it has more than one. We have no idea what the gun does, so... Did Baz Vagra just... Was Overlord meant to be the thing where the, it's just like, oh, we're getting a new ride line, but Overlord's just here as a placeholder. Baz Vagra suddenly comes in. F off Overlord. Baz Vagra just takes up all of its support and suddenly becomes a pseudo greed on Because I'm not so sure... Let, 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 let's think about this real quickly. Uh, Baz Vagra, just let's just call grade two down 
gets plus 20 from this motherfucker over here. So the Basma Gras grade 2 is now 30k. Persona Ride, 40k. Plus a boost, 55k. Okay, not that. 55 on a rear guard still pretty good though. I mean, there's not really a deal with that. So 53 is pretty good. But then when you give that to Vanguard, 23 from its skill. I mean, from the sword. Um, 33 from Persona Ride. Plus the 20 from this motherfucker, so 58. Okay, so it's just 58 in general, but still, pretty big numbers. Not a pseudo greed on, slightly less than pseudo greed on, but if I'm getting all these numbers right. Still, Baz McGraw, hits heavy, very scary, Who? <laughs> four of Trick Moon, like, straight up, Trick Moon, four of, no arguments. Next up on the list, we have Great Maxa Motai! Or not a, if you know what I'm talking about, then good for you, but a lot of you people who do not play Inazuma 11, will not understand the small reference I just made to a very certain character. Anyways, to continue, we have Gradiator of Dust Storm, or Grenader of Dust Storm, Ore, aka base, 5k shield, grade on once boost, auto rear when your opponent's rear guards are retired during your main phase, choose one of your cannoneer of Dust Storm, Dore, on your rear guard, and you may turn it to hand. So, you know, you basically get the ability to get a card back to hand, and most likely, since it's not a trigger, most likely, then it's a 5k shield back to hand. Okay. Interesting, except what is Cannoneer of Dust Storm Dorde? Cannoneer of Dust Storm Dorde, aka base 5k shield, great ones boost, auto rear when your opponent's rear guards retired during your main phase, choose one of your gren Grenader of Dust Storm Dorde on your rear guard and you may turn it to hand. So they are, gr they are just grade ones, they're not grade ones and two, they are just grade ones that can bounce each other to hand. And the only way you can do that is if they're retired during your main phase. So the only way in my mind I can see this working is you call these two, use Eugene, bounce both of them back to hand with by resting them with Eugene, of course, or like use them from Eugene's call and then they get bounced because maybe you have like a bronchio out of that call or something. I can see it. Like I can see these two being really useful, but... I can't see them being extremely useful. Like, I give these guys a hard two over three of. I genu I genuinely do. I think these guys can be useful, but I like everything that's come out of Eugene so far, minus these two guys. So, in all honesty, I'm not going to run them. They do seem interesting, though. If you want to run them, run them at, like, two of, because I think they could be a good thing, but they are useless without the other one. So, two of, two of. Next up, we have Cheer Girl Fiona, a Dark Irregulars, Grade 2, no, Spike Brothers. I literally said this morning when I was making this, I wouldn't forget what clan it was, yet I literally did. I said Dark Irregulars because I saw the Succubus wings. I saw, I said Pale Moon because I saw the colors. I don't know why I forgot this was Spike Brothers. 10k base, 5k shield, Grade 2 with Intercept, Auto when it's placed on rear or Guard Circle. Uh, Soul Blast 1, choose one of any player's rear guards and it gets plus 10 for the turn and cannot pay the cost for any of its auto abilities. So most likely that means they can't use the auto abilities because um, if you can't pay the cost, it's different from saying you can't pay the cost and you may not pay the cost. Cannot pay the cost means you're not able to use the ability whatsoever. Be, don't have to pay the cost means you can use it and you don't have to you know pay the cost to activate the ability. So in this thing's case, yeah you're giving something plus 10 but you are effectively making it useless on board when it ha with an auto ability. So maybe not the best thing for your deck considering they are on auto abilities. I mean, yeah, because it has to be another rear guard, so that's um, kind of bad. But then also, I mean, unless you're playing Dudleys, you can just kind of send the unit back to the bottom. But then also, you can technically use this on the opponent on an attack that you know is like maybe dangerous because maybe it's like an auto, it's like Feather Palace where it's an auto, I think uh, Feather Palace is an auto anyways, flip all your damage face down, so blast two great threes, gets plenty, plus, ah, gets plus 20 in a crit, you can use it preemptively before they do it, and then nullify its auto abilities, yeah, it's getting plus 10, but it's getting 10k less than it would before, and not as many crits, and definitely not a Sentinel Restrictor now, so Fiona, all around really good, she, her ability is very interesting, but she is the equivalent to a cock block of great extents, three copies. Next up, we have Steam Performer Markham, uh, Gear Chronic. I don't know why I was about to say Dark Regulars. 8k base, fact, 10k shield, greater one with boost. Uh, act rear once per turn, Soul Boss 1 to discard a card from hand, and this unit cannot be chosen for your opponent's card effects until the end of your opponent's next turn. Did they make this to counter this? Is that what this is here for, to counter this? I mean, it's still good, but like, 
Is that why it's here? Because these were released at the same time. And auto rear at the start of your opponent's battle phase. Counter blast two, bind this unit, choose an opponent's rear guard, put it to the bottom of their deck. If you put look, your opponent looks at the top card of the deck and calls it to rear. So this lad can just say F the opponent's attack strategy and get rid of a pesky unit before it's even able to swing. And the only downside, this is a counter blast two in a deck that has a decent number of counter chargers. Mmm. Uh-huh. Markham, my boy. Four of... Oof, can't even describe it. Four of Markham. Next up, we have Steam Knight Armachin. AK base, 5k show, great to his intercept. Continues rear if you have 5 or more cards in your soul. Gets plus 5, active on both players' turns. So it's 13k base. Obviously, you can use some Barrow Magnus. You can somewhat use some Bruce, but it will come back to bite you in the ass in the end game if like, you use Final Rush along and your opponent's still not dead by some miracle. You can use it in Greed On, but you shouldn't because, you know, it's going to be fodder for Greed On. I mean, they've done better with Greed On because now, like, you have ways to call it during Battle Phase, so it's not really that bad, but still, like, th th that's the thing about Greed On. His support is anything that is remotely related to just anything. Like, as long as it's a unit, it's support for Greed On regardless. But the problem is. A lot of the things, like, they have good abilities, but if you were to shove them into Greed On, they effectively become vanillas and sack fodder and nothing else. So, but then again, they're upgrading Greed On, so that's not the case, which means Barrow Magnus Greed On builds are going to go dominate everything. Bruce, I understand why they took Barrow Magnus Triple Rare now, and, um, yeah, they kind of needed it. So, Armashan, I give it a 3 of 4 of maybe if you want to run it in Barrow. And now we have our last two cards for today, which are the Shield in, not Shield, Gun and Spear from the new set. Now, we knew what the Spear did, or we knew one of its abilities from watching the anime, and we didn't know what the other ability of it was, and we never got to see the gun. I've read both. They are interesting, to say the least. So, first up, we have Sealed Blade Spear, Adatita. I said that completely wrong, so let me try that again. Ad Adita. Grade 3, set, set, ah, normal order. Right DD Arms, Sealed Blaze, made in Basil Gras. After being played, the specified Vanguard is armed to it. If a new right DD Arms is armed, put this thing to drop zone. Play it by counterblasting 1 and auto van. When this card is armed, draw a card, and you may play in additional orders this turn. So, with the starter, you can search your deck for a, um, for the shield, equip the spear, use the spear skill to draw a card, because that's just for free, and then equip the shield. I mean, granted, Basil Gras. Basil Gras Soul Charge 1 calls something from drop abilities only once per turn. Maybe we should have picked up on that from this thing existing. I don't know. But it's weird because, yeah, you're paying two counterbots to equip two orders, but you're effectively getting a free draw out of it, and that ability to arm an order is for free. So, sure. And continues Vanguard during your turn. The unit armed with this gets plus 10. So, just a free persona right to Van. To me, even more is that. This is just Prevete's skill. They literally took half of Prevete's skill, the one that's just an on swing, and gave it to Baz Vagra, except it's a continuous. Prezveveki is when it attacks, and granted it's not a once per turn when it attacks, but I feel like the spear isn't... It's arguable that the spear is better than the uh, sword because one of they both cost counterblast in their own respective skills, but... The spear allows for more setup and more power on Van, while the sword allows for, or just, yeah, no, they both allow the same power on Van, but the sword adds up for extra damage. Now, here's my thing with this. You, you only have two right DD arms right now, which means, and especially because you want to arm twice for Trick Star purposes, Trick Moon, of course, then you have to run the sword. But the second they give us an option... I might be erasing the sword from the game because while it may be searchable, the spear, in my opinion, is like better. And the only reason why I run the sword right now is one, yes, because of the damage thing, but two, because I have to. So take that as you will. Two copies, four copies, depending on what happens. Sealed Blaze Gun Chandara is the gun. Grade 3, normal order, left DD arm, sealed blaze made in Baz Vagra. You know, you replace this with the shield. After being placed, the specified Vanguard arms to it. If a new left DD arms is armed, put this to drop. Play it by Soul Blasting 1. Auto van, when it when this armed, when this, when the unit armed with this card attacks, counter blast 2 and the armed unit gets plus 1 drive for the battle. At the end of the battle, put it to drop. Okay, so here's the thing. 
no matter what, you get the same output in terms of power when you take the sword and the spear. What comes down to difference is the gun and the shield. The shield is a 10k just randomly during your opponent's turn. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's a good thing. This is a plus one drive, which means you have the potential to get more drive checks out of it. Now, here's my thing. I feel like the gun got, like, the worst thing, because I've seen, like, everyone's theories on the gun. I have my own theories on the gun. The gun is, to my knowledge, what no one was expecting, and getting just a drive out of it for a counterblast of two, when your other orders that you're most likely going to play are, like, counterblast. Now, you can play the aggressive way and go spear and gun, which is an option, but then you have no defensive line with the shield, and then you have no searcher for the starter, or you could go all of them, which I'm going to do, which is going to be Chaos Incarnate. Or you could go sword this thing, but then literally run out of counterblast on your like first turn, maybe? Not first turn, but you will pay for counterblast just to get that damage in triple drive. <sighs> I want to like Oh, that makes sense why it's bad. It's a common. This is a double rare. Never mind. I was about to say I hate the gun so much. I just realized it's a goddamn common. Yeah, okay, you know, I excuse the gun for that. I I'm so sorry for everyone who was like expecting some really good bullshit out of that. Like, I didn't actually realize it was a common till this very moment. So Oh, sorry, it's a rare, but my point still stands. So, yeah, okay. The gun is not that good, in my opinion. Spear, hells yeah. Take your opinion on that as you will. I'm not going to say either of them are bad. I'm not going to say either of them are good in their own respective rights. It really just depends on you as a player. In my personal opinion, I'm going to run all of them. The first one I'm probably going to cut is the gun, because that's the one I like the least. But <laughs> that's you. If you want to run the gun at four, run the gun at four. I'm not going to stop you from doing it, because it is a good card in its own right, depending on how you play. So... I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what your guys' opinion on because I'm actually curious. I don't really pay attention to other people's deck profiles because I don't want to, like, force my own... I don't... I don't want to just be, like, the type of person that tells people to put stuff out and, they, and then they get criticized for their own styles. So I never really say put your deck profiles in the comment. But actually, like, put your ideas in the comment for this one because I really want to know, are you going to run all of them? Are you going to run one over the other? Are you going to run just two instead of... All of them, you're going to run three instead of all of them. You're going to run just one for some reason, which I question, actually. But still, like, I'm curious. What does everyone think on these weapons? What are their deck builds going to be? I know what mine is going to be, so I have no way to be influenced by this. If you don't want to be influenced by this and people comment, do not check the comments. But I am, at, I am actually curious, so please comment on this. So if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to Patreon, join the Discord, follow the Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up. You're Vanguards. Yeah.